Okay, so dear Dharma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. And also if it, you are comfortable, please close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. While you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् ओमेच तु द ब्लेस्ड वन the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, we'll take a few minutes to, to understand ourselves, how this practice can help for us to, to develop our inner awareness. So we, almost in the two years, this pandemic situation and the whole world experienced it and it, it was very horrible and was very difficult. And people went through a lot of hard time and a lot of loved ones died and separated. And it's a, it's a kind of like a situation that unexpected and also it's a kind of like a, it, it, acceptable because it is a virus situation. But end of that the pandemic today, there is a war start in a, another part of the world. So if we look at the, the history, when the Spanish flu happens in that time, and the, the, the Second World War start after the pandemic. So look now today, we end up the pandemic and people go to war. So what you need to understand? We have to understand we're living in a very artificial world. You can't expect the world or the society or the environment or your country or the nation going to become very wise or it going to become more reasonable for all living beings. It's not going to happen. So our very personal life is artificial. And when you look around our house, our day-to-day -day things, this all the consumer product and things, artificial. And the most of time, our relationships, even husband, wife, artificial. And sometimes now, you know, people create the human beings kind of like artificial living beings. And so, it's a very, very artificial life. And the, everything that around the cities, the build 
artificial ways and when you go on, on, on pre-ways and sometimes you th see trees and it's a kind of like a beautiful tree but it's artificial and sometimes flowers in there are flowers artificial and what we see sometimes and our life depends on sometimes artificial and some sometimes the the entire society artificial the nations artificial the whole world became a kind of like an artificial world so that's why we can't expect out of that artificial life we can't expect the reality truth or the dharma any compassion don't don't look for that and other thing is you should not get disturbed out of that situations and there are a lot of people start to talk about this and there are a lot of students start to call me and you know and ask so what i want to tell whoever follow our sessions remember the world always like that the people never going to do become more better they become part of the the current or the part of the history but it is your personal responsibility how you can get out of this artificial life and become kind of like uh, realistic so for that this artificial why this artificial life accelerate why it become so powerful why it become so strong because the people have a influence to go towards the success and satisfaction that's how the our mentality build up that's how our life build up that's how we try to live success and satisfaction so when it come to success success is measured by others and success depend on comparison and if you try to become satisfied so satisfaction come out of the the inner being so sex, the satisfaction measured by yourself becoming as who you are but the thing is if you use the satisfaction that the success as a tool to gain the satisfaction you will never find it it become more frustrated it become more hard difficult and it always going to take you to some kind of a struggle or the resistance and when it come to the whole world that is what happened because the countries the nations the people the leaders everybody look for success when they build on that what happens they will never find the satisfaction because once they reach to certain level it will push them to something else so then we have to come to a point to understand ourselves how we can go beyond this for well, that one of the very first thing that you have to remember you have to take this as a your story otherwise if you neglect or oh, let it be let it be you not going to become part of the change and you also you can't change so you have to take it as a your story and you have to put into yourself you have to put the strength on you and develop the the awareness within yourself rather than becoming artificial go towards the the really realistic life so in in your background in your environment it is your responsibility because you are a part of it so then yourself always be real so that's why this kind of lessons important how we can be real because that we live with the the this artificial current 
we nourish from the artificial current and sometimes we born from the artificial strength. And then how we can be real. Another thing is that a very the the meaning or the very understanding ourselves or the very search that we look within the self also became artificial. And that's why there is it we hold it to it, but there is nothing. But this nothingness. We can't just get as only by the self. Just telling all this, there is no self. People are not going to understand it. So then how you can get into this realistic life and get in that understand this. And how you can experience yourself. This inner behavior happen as a cause and effect, not because of the self. Why that empty, that no self is difficult to understand? Because when we take our eye as eye, ear as ear, nose as nose, tongue as tongue, the body as body, the mind as mind, as a result of that what happened, the self going to be there as self. So if you look then very carefully, if you examine a little bit, what is this eye? What is this nose? What is this ear? What is this tongue? What is this body? Then you recognize it is a, the result of something. And behind this, experience with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, there is a deeper mechanism. And as a result of that mechanism, your eye appear, ear appear, nose appear, so like that. Even though basically we physically we see this eye, ear, you will never see the real eye. You can't see it. Because the reason when the the pictures or the colors appear at that very moment, the eye appear. When there is no sound, your ear not going to appear. When the sound is there, ear appear. So when you when you deeply think or believe, or I have eye, ear, nose, or it's kind of like a separate permanent entity as a result of that what happened you validate the inside this awareness experience which we call the self so then how we can recognize this so that is the method we call in the very beginning we have to tranquilize the mind and after that, from that point, we go to the vipassana level, thoroughly, deeply observe and recognize how things come to be as they are. So when it comes to that, we have to, to observe ourselves. Because what is real for you is your own experience, not something else. So then, then the realization happens once you recognize the, the experience. So when it comes to that tranquility meditation, that's awareness, is suddenly not going to happen. Why? Because our mind oh, everywhere scattered. So then you have to collect that everything, and we call it collective awareness. Another thing is you have to systematically cultivate your awareness, focusing it again and again, little by little. So that's why systematically, not suddenly, step by step, little by little, you have to, to cultivate it. 
cultivate your awareness focusing to a primary mental object again and again again and again again and again and in a certain level what will happen your mind start to settle down and become more aware and recognize the feelings and the thoughts will little by little little by little settle down and you will have the undisturbed mind and now the awareness become more sharper and clear it not get disturbed out of the thoughts and then you can catch the feelings you can see the feelings you can feel the feelings so that is the entering point so that is the power of uh, becoming a human beings because you are capable to tackle your own inner feelings that's why human beings capable to attain to the liberation so once you catch the feelings rather than go with the feelings because if you go with the feelings if the mind start to go with the feelings if the mind agitate by the feelings if the mind validate the feelings if the mind accept the feelings what will happen it start to become emotions so when the feelings so as you know the feelings very physical and the, it it create a kind of like a current the any physical things in movement what happen it become a current energy so the feelings very physical but the thing is that the the mind is the current inside us when the mind is start to come with this physical it become emotions emotions means uh, that it become energy in motion emotions energy in motion so the when the physical and mental come together that is where the emotions arise so but the thing is the what the awareness does when the awareness come to the middle what happen you you see the feelings but you don't allow your thoughts to get into that and once the thoughts not get into that what happens the feelings become feelings and rather than get into that just witness it allow it to be there that is the, that is the only thing you have to do so whatever you feelings you recognize maybe we start with the the here sensation of our inhalation exhalation but any 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 bodily feelings physical feelings that whatever the feelings that you recognize if you allow it to be there and if you witness it rather than get into it rather than interfere with your feelings what will happen you will see the that feel that the feelings itself arise but release but if the thoughts get into that what will happen it go into different level of current which we call the emotions but now you not into no you now you not interfere with the thoughts so that is where the awareness play the role and now your feelings arise and release and once you know that once you see it what will happen rather than the the feelings your awareness become more strong or strong and clear and more and more and more feelings you can see you can feel it you can see it and at the same time you know the feelings arise and itself it release so that is a wisdom you gain out of it 
But the thing is, once if you interfere with the thoughts, disturb with the thoughts to the feelings, it becomes emotions. And then the emotions has a reason to do whatever that it wants. Then it becomes different. So that is where mostly we validate our emotions and we validate our feelings with our thoughts and then we go with the life. And in the society, validate our emotions, validate our feelings and we live with the feelings, we live for the feelings, we live by the feelings. If there are no feelings, you have no idea what is life. Why? Because you, you experience life by feelings. But here, when you come to the awareness, you recognize, just go with the feeling is not the life. It is a, just a part of life. Life happening behind the feelings. So once you recognize that, you see how the feelings arise as a result of cause and effect. And there is no any magic. No, there is no somebody interfere or someone in the middle bring new feelings. It happened as a result, result of cause and effect. And then you recognize how things come to be as they are. If you go with, you, you don't recognize, now you see it. That's why you, you recognize how it happened like that. But most of time in the world, we just look with this conventional way of life from here to there, from me to you, this to that, so like that. And as you know, very, very famous, there's a philosophical, a psychological, scientific question we have. And that is, so, chicken and egg, which came first? So, why we have this question? It's nothing wrong with the chicken, nothing wrong with the egg. But the, our point of view create this question and people cannot find the answer. Why? Because the very point of view depends on the dualistic mind. But if you look very carefully, when it comes to the cause and effect, causality, causation, this both come together. That is the key. So when you have the wisdom to understand this, this both not separate each and everything interconnected in there is an interrelationship without one other thing cannot exist once you see that you're not going to separate from this to that so so like that when it comes to the causality you come to a deeper understanding this everything happen together, not this one first and then that one later. No. That's why when it comes to the, the Buddha's teaching, it's go like a chakra, circle, because there is no beginning point or the ending point. It is a different way of understanding. That is the, the way of understanding of vipassana. It's take you to the different way of to see because we normally it, we normally see things according to the conventional way of life and we we see things to make it very easy and we are addicted to that but your mind has so much power to recognize certain things but imagine yourself, 
you know that you know that uh, there is gravity but you never really you really never experience or thought that the understood what is this gravity and relativity and causality there is something but we don't we we see things you know we go with things but we never really understood but this practice will give you a deeper understanding within your own body and mind to recognize what is this causality because once you understand within yourself naturally it is very easy for you to apply it to other things and what happens the once the, the once you recognize this causality causation dependent origination and you, once you know this everything interconnected and have an interdependent relationship there is nothing there is nothing in this universe just imagine no there is nothing in this universe exist separately itself without changing in the material world physical world even in the mental world there is nothing so once you understand this it's become like a medicine for you that is the best medicine that you can carry with your samsaric journey until you attain to the nibbana because you know these things change and at the same time these things not kind of like a, the way that we think and we always personalize and we try to take it kind of like a concrete way of experience we kind of like a per, permanent always our inner experience outer experience we always try to permanent but there is nothing like that once you see that this is what happened so you know people sometimes thinks i lose things i miss things but once you learn this art once you get into this what will happen you will never lose anything you know what because you start to give back you start to give back there is a sutta called na tumhaka sutta and if you look very carefully there is nothing related to you you know you can't claim anything as this is mine look at around you you know it, it belong to somebody else and everything if you you know look you know sometimes even the name world made in you know this country that country this belong to something somebody so when you come to this course and understand this causation what happened you start to release things that is the very mechanism of the feelings even now you see it within your own feelings once you not interfere feelings itself release but once the mind interfere what will happen it tangle it become different energy same thing with the material world now you apply it that that mechanism to this outside world also there is nothing wrong with this computer or the table or the lights or the cell phone or this cup or anything but once you interfere with the mind mind this is mine this is mine it belong to me what happens there is a different way of current to start to come so but now you see it what will happen you start to give back everything give back give back your husband give back your wife give back your children give back that your partners give back your love you know give back your all the friends and give back your enemies give back your all the 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 hard, bad people gave you hard time give back give back that everything to them and then you will see 
even this body we accumulated from you know somewhere through the food or the environment and give it back why because if you don't give it back one day what will happen it's going to go back to that so once you understand it you're not going to lose anything how beautiful it is because how much we you know people worry so much losing things with wrong understanding no and see people go to war even you know and thinking oh i lose my country i lose this i lose my nation it's a wrong and strong believing you can't lose anything why because you don't have anything so in the ancient time you know from the, from the genghis khan you know he was the the warrior you know it's not like today you know these machines or the this uh, armored car and go and you know destroy other places you know they go face to face and the king go first not in the you know ac room and you know calling and give command no you know they don't go you know tweet or facebook live you no know? they go you know to the war face to face and the first king go and fight the genghis khan alexander the great you know when uh, king ashoka so when we look at that human history who we are today you know but still we don't learn from that history you know so then we have to remember we can't accumulate anything better than us there were many millionaires you know and there were many many rich people successful people and they died on the way even not sometimes their own mansion you know and sometimes you know the they felt they not even lying down you know died on the bed and the genghis khan fell down from his own you know uh, horse and got sick and died and uh, as you know alexander the great he he on the way you know he died you know so like that we have to understand this anything is not belong to us so from today remember yourself if something is bothering to you you giving a hard time remember give it back don't hold it to it because holding it to it means not materially you hold the mechanism is that material brings some kind of feelings to you and your thoughts hold it to the feelings that's how you hold it to the world otherwise you can't hold it to the material there is no way look at your body you know even this piece of cloth not stick into the body you know it can fell down so like that even this body itself not you know hold it to the body forever and as you know you know your hair every day you know it's go down and the nails go out you know teeth fell down you know so like that and the skin you know day by day day by day it's go away so like this even our body so then why we hold it to things you know while we living in this time period make it very real don't make it artificial that's the bottom line you know when you go through this spiritual path that is where you go it will rescue you from this artificial world and take you to the realistic world that is within your own life how as i mentioned it's through recognizing your feelings and get out cut down your emotions separate your emotions and recognizing and that recognition will release all the tangles and that way when you realize life it brings the the real satisfaction not satisfaction we go through with this artificial world not we gain through this comparison so that is the day your happiness joy your joy your through security life your through 
awareness that your true joy going to be there with you. So otherwise, we always in a danger. There's no way we can escape. So that's why every day, little bit give you a time to practice. And while you practice, always remember, step by step, little by little, systematically, bring your awareness, develop your attention, and develop your focus toward the primary mental object. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit. So bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes three times yourself and say Supatveva or may I be well and happy. Take a moment and think, we gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathing, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. And when it happened through the sensation, recognize it, do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so are prayed low strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Imaya Dhamma nu Dhamma Pati Pati A Buddham Puja Mi Dhamma Puja Mi Sangham Puja Mi Adhaya Imaya Pati Pati A Jati Jarabhya Dimaranam Ha Bari Bunjisami Idam Me Punya Kammanga Savakya Vahango Tu Sabbadukka Pamunchatu Bless you.